The wildfires raging in central and northern Alberta have not only contributed to poor air quality, but have wreaked havoc on many communities. Thousands of people have had to evacuate their homes, leaving them displaced. But on the flip side, hundreds of volunteers have stepped up to the plate to help those in need. And one of them is Stephen Roach, who spent three weeks using his skills as a chef to feed thousands of evacuees. He joins me now. Stephen, welcome to Bridge City News. So great to have you on today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so Stephen, where there's tragedy, the triumph of the human spirit shines through, and this certainly is the case for you. So you spent three weeks volunteering your time up north. So why don't you tell us about your experience? For starters, you're a volunteer with the Salvation Army, right? Yes, I am. Okay. And it was an experience that I'll never forget, like, because I was in places that I've always wanted to see the northern parts of Canada, and it was nice to actually experience them and helping people in distress and serving the, their communities. Oh, 100 percent. And you were first put on standby, right, to go help with the fire evacuees. How did this all start? How long ago did this begin? Uh, it was almost four weeks ago. I was put on standby, and I got a call. I just got back from doing a motorcycle ride when I got a call that I was to be in High Prairie for the next morning for breakfast, so. Wow. Not just to be there for breakfast, but to cook breakfast, right? Yes, to cook breakfast for 300 people at the site and where I was in Fowler. Uh, so. Okay, so how, you just dropped everything and you just went? Yes, I did. I called Don and he got me the, the keys to open the garage to get the truck and we said a little prayer together, a spirit, and then I was off on, on my way to northern, northern Alberta. Right. And when you say Don, you mean Don Bladen of the Salvation Army here in Lethbridge. And the truck would be the kitchen truck, right, that you worked out of. It's a mobile kitchen, basically. So you drove this mobile kitchen all the way up there. How many hours did that take? That's not, that's not just up the road. That's, that's way up there. It, it was. It's like about 13-hour drive or so. And... I had a little stop over in Edmonton, and then I got up and I was back on the road again. And I arrived there at a little after eight o'clock in the morning. And then I was told, uh, this is where I'm going. Here's the address. There's your food truck behind you. And off you went. So. And people were starving, and they were probably very excited to see you show up. It was. like It, it was an experience, especially because it's something I've done before, but not on this extent. Like because I've cooked all over the place and being able to help people in distress and be able to mentor people in, with the spirit of God, it was even a lot more enjoyable for me. Yeah, so you're an, an executive chef by trade. So is this why you were chosen to go? No, I, I, I don't know why I was chosen to go. I was just given the reins one day and that was it. I, off I went. <laughs> All right. So you spent three weeks in this kitchen truck. So you went first to High Prairie, right? But uh, that's not the only place. You actually moved around a little bit, right? Yes. And then I went from High Prairie to Fowler, and then I went from Fowler up to Yellowknife, Northwest Territory. Incredible. And this was the first time that Salvation Army had ever been deployed to the Northwest Territories, right? Yes. We were the ambassadors for the Salvation Army in the Northwest Territory. Oh, that's incredible. Now, did you personally see any smoke or fire on your way up there? What was your experience like? Uh, the only fire I seen was when I left Edmonton and I took uh, Highway 33 North. It was smoldering on the side of the highway on my way to High Prairie. But otherwise than that, I didn't see no fires whatsoever, but very smoky in places where I was, that you had to wear a mask half the time while you were in the kitchen cooking. Oh, yeah, I can imagine what an uncomfortable situation, too, when you're dealing with the smoke and trying to get all these people fed. And uh, and the highways were open for you, so you were you didn't run into that problem, right? No, we never ran into that problem whatsoever. My GPS just told me if there was fires that you couldn't go, so it just it took me alternate routes. So that was the easiest way to do it. 
for me. Yeah, and Stephen, had you ever done anything like this before? Uh, no, I've been stationed at a lot of different places. I was with the Canadian Coast Guards. I was stationed in Frobisher Bay, Baffin Island, and stuff like that. But this was different. Yeah. <laughs> Way different. I can imagine. Now, you provided us. You provided us with some pictures of your kitchen truck, and it looks amazing. It looks cozy, though. So, were you used to working in such confined spaces? I'm assuming that when you were an executive chef, you had a bit more kitchen to work with. Yeah, but when I was stationed with the Coast Guard, my kitchen wasn't much bigger than what what the truck is on okay. board the ship. So you okay. had a small kitchen. Okay, so you were the perfect man for the job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, and I understand it's a fully equipped kitchen, too. It's amazing. Yes, it is. It's an amazing kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it was a good truck to work on. And by the looks of it, if it stays the way it's going right now, I'm supposed to be deployed next week again for another two weeks up in High Prairie again. So. Incredible. And so you did all the meals for the firefighters and the displaced people, three meals a day, right? Three meals a day, yeah. All right. You must have heard some incredible and heartbreaking stories from these people. Yes, I did. I, especially when I met some of the, the leading people from the different tribes that were up north, like the Métis and stuff like that. It was nice to sit down with some of the elders and find out where they were from and how they were coping, like they were having a hard time trying to find out information for their own people if they could go back to their to the reservations where they are and stuff like that. That was difficult. And I had a gentleman with me, his name is Ed Dean, and he's a pastor, so he he sat down with a lot of them and talked and prayed with them and stuff like that, which was, for me, was very energetic for me because it was some days you get down and you sit down with Ed and have a nice prayer and then you felt like you were rejuvenated again and you go right back to work again. So it was great. That's incredible. I, I'm, I would imagine these people were very scared and some of them must have had quite the stories to tell you. Uh, yes, they did. And what was nice about it in Yellowknife is that a lot of the people that were displaced when we were serving the food did come and help on the serving line and did serve their own people. Like it was nice to see that, that they wanted to get involved because they're so used to working and all of a sudden they're sitting around doing nothing. So I just cook all the food and hand it in to them and they'd help serve the food. So it was it was a good experience. Oh but. yeah, and it gave them that feeling of productivity too. I can imagine just sitting yes, there in did. limbo. They must have been terrified. And I'm sure you became so attached to some of them too. Yes, I did. I became attached to a lot of them because you get I made new friends, put it that way, and new connections that if I ever want to go up to Yellowknife, I have places that I can stop in and visit, a place to stay, I was told, so. <laughs> That's lovely. Were, were any of these people able to get back into their homes while you were there? Yes, there was only, from what I could understand, I think there was 10 or 12 families that lost their homes, but everybody was able to, by the time that we left to come back to Alberta, there was, no, there was nobody left. There was only about 30 people that were still waiting for transportation out of Yellowknife back to their homes. Oh, that's incredible. Wow, I, I feel so bad for those, those people that lost their homes. That's terrible. Um, and my understanding is you cooked for the firefighters as well, right? But you didn't necessarily get to meet them? No, I did not, no. Because they were an hour and and a half drive from where I was stationed with the truck. So we had a vehicle that just picked up all the food and brought it out to the firefighters. And then they had a hall where they could go and serve the food for them and then three meals a day. It was like... You must have been so, so busy. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. <laughs> like I tell you, when you hit your bed at nighttime, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't have to worry about falling asleep yeah. because you were dead exhausted.
I bet. And your days probably started really early because, I mean, breakfast, <laughs> that starts early. Six wow. Six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You had that breakfast ready for eight o'clock. So it took you at least two hours because there's a lot of process with the truck that you had to do before you could actually start your breakfast. Like, because it's a kitchen on wheels. So you had a lot of little ins and outs that you have to make sure everything is working properly before you can even start cooking. I know, so. I'm sure you had to wake up at three in the morning or something. So you did all the cooking, but who provided the food or, or the money for the food? Where did that come from? All the food was provided. When I was in High Prairie and Father, all of our food came to Cisco, through the, like, that's who the Salvation Army has a contract with to provide the food with. And then when I was in Yellowknife, we went to a directory to a distributor in Yellowknife, which, which was easier for me to make menus for a two day or four day stint. And he'd order the food in for me, and that that way I knew that I'd always have fresh food every day. So. Mm -hmm. And you made sure that you bought locally, right, to keep it in the community. Yes, and in, in Yellowknife we bought everything locally. So, we've even cleaned out some stores some days on products that we couldn't find at to the distributor, but we could find in a store like the Co-op or other places. So we went in and. The produce manager was not very happy with us some days because we took a lot of his produce, like fresh oh. produce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you going to do, though? You have all these people, uh, you know, hundreds of people, I guess, that were kind of, were, was it was a community center, right, where they were sort of living. We were doing a little over 300 meals per breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three times a day. Okay, and you were able to have the freedom to cook what you wanted to and and what yeah. you needed to. That's incredible. That, was nice. <laughs> that is really. There was no really menu. Nice. I made up my own menu as we went along, so which was easier because that way you knew that the product that you were serving was fresh and. Mm -hmm. Oh, incredible! Uh, this must have been probably one of the most rewarding experiences for you. It was. It was very gratifying for me. Like, uh, as a Christian, I believe that we're here to serve. And that for me was the biggest I've ever served before. Yeah, I can imagine. Absolutely. Uh, what's next for you, Stephen? I, I guess you said you're sort of on standby. You're waiting to go back to High Prairie next week. I don't know. I'd like to take a trip back to Nova Scotia on my motorcycle, but I'm just waiting to see what happens. <laughs> You're a man of mystery, for sure. <laughs> and then to stay that way. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, let's hope that uh, these wildfires subside and that everything gets back to normal and you won't have to go back to High Prairie yeah. and do this all over again. I hear that there's supposed to be rain for the next few days. That might help the situation. Stephen, I'm sure that those northern communities are so grateful for you and we're so thankful for your service and what you're doing and I mean if you do go back up there like you mentioned before you might be able to see some of those people that you became so attached to. Yes I hope so. Yeah. It, it, it would be nice to be able to reconnect with a lot of the people that I like I helped while I was up there. Yeah what was the general feeling when you were there? Were they scared? Was it like apprehension, anxiety or was it just kind of like this is when how we it first is. got up there, it was they were they didn't know what to expect with us arriving up there to do what we were sent up there to do. But the second day, when you had people come to the truck and saying thank you, and they wanted to come up into the truck and have a look at the kitchen facilities and stuff like that, it made me feel a lot at ease with myself and with them. So that way. I knew I was doing something good for the community itself by serving getting meals to them. So, mm -hmm. what were some of the most heartbreaking stories that you were hearing? Of uh, people talking about losing everything that they own. That was very hard. Like especially when they left with the only thing they had was a small little bag and the clothes on their back. So that was very hard. It was, it, it 
bothered me to see people in that state of, you know, something that I've never seen before until I went up there because I've always been on the other side of the, the fence. Like I used to be a firefighter. So you see one side and then I do this and now I'm on the opposite side of it, trying to help the people that are very in distress. Of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we appreciate what you're doing there. I'm sure that they do as well. And thank you for coming on today and sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. I hope we can do this again sometime. Absolutely. Let me know when you're back from High Prairie. That, that was Stephen Roach, a volunteer with the Salvation Army. He's an executive chef turned volunteer cook for hundreds of displaced wildfire evacuees. We're so grateful for him.